Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, we're looking at the soybeans this afternoon because we've had nothing but rain all week since that last cultivation. And we got yesterday dry and this afternoon dry. And then tomorrow and Tuesday, it's supposed to be raining and raining all freaking week long once again. Man, we just can't get a break. Everybody's having a hell of a time trying to get any hay put up myself included we haven't got all the first cutting put up yet we still got another about 60 acres to go just on the alfalfa but moly smokes these soybeans are looking clean this is the same spot what we checked on uh, the last video we was kind of looking through here looking at the soybeans here they are they're still very weed free we've got a i mean they're not totally weed free but they're very clean hardly anything coming up there's a cockleburg i'm just gonna go ahead and grab him by hand yeah he wasn't even wasn't even hardly in there just laying on the top looking very good i think we're gonna go ahead and run them again this afternoon this will be the third and possibly the final time we run I don't know it's just it's just been raining so god dang often up here i don't i don't know if we'll be doing a third one or a fourth one or not and possibly will because like i said it's raining so much but if we can get dirt really really rammed into these we might not have to cultivate again i would like to not but you never know they're just looking so dang good guys these are these are really really chooching right along just kind of walk over here for a minute we've got a drive path growing through here so we can get to our bottom down there of the hay field unfortunate but that's the way it goes oh here we got some weeds coming up pretty healthy amount so it's definitely going to do us a lot of good go ahead and hit these and that's what happens when you got so much rain every day and it's good it's hard packed so we'll get that broke open and get some dirt rolled up into the rows yep let's get hitting them look at those beans up there just looking clean and looking good and here we go making the first pass good gracious we're going a lot faster already five mile an hour you see by the ground color that it is going to be a little bit damp, a little bit on the wet side. We've got some spots that are kind of trying to hold some water. I did just go through that big mud hole, so that's where all the mud on the tires is coming from. Don't get excited about that. I think we might be able to go a faster gear yet. We've bumped up one gear. We ripped way up. probably go a little faster
about done. A lot nicer day out today. It's about 78 to 83, somewhere in there. Low humidity, but there's rain coming. So it'll be nice to have these cleaned up again for this week's rain coming through. It's supposed to rain again every day of the week. So it's not really, I mean, we could have waited another day or two to cultivate, or maybe three or four, but that's gonna be right in the middle of the rain coming through, so we gotta take the cultivating when we can get it, I guess. Our wet spot's gotten a little bigger since the last pass. We can't do these two end rows at all now. Yeah. Look at that stack of hay, man. And that's the small stack. Uh. Oh, man. Just got done feeding them little baby pigs again. Went out for a little ride with the kids earlier on the four-wheelers. We're sure glad to have the cultivating done again before the rain gets here. That's, that's paramount. That's the most important thing, so... Anyway, let's see what tomorrow's going to bring before we shut this video off. It's going to be uh, probably raining again. Let's just see how it kind of turns. Well, I'm not sure yet, guys. Those, those heavy rains really didn't come. We've had a few light showers, quarter to three quarters of an inch. But man... Those soybeans are almost closing in certain spots. This is the real, the real good fertile side hill, or kind of, it's kind of flat-ish. It's not really flat. Looking pretty darn clean and pretty good up here. But you get over, around over that away, and back over towards the clay knob back there, and then the beans are just struggling. You can really tell the difference from the road even, where you've got nice tall beans like these. Compared to those, are still pretty short. But man, they look really nice. So I guess I don't know whether we're going to hit them again or not. If these will go ahead and canopy quick enough, I guess we won't. But I kind of think we will because those over there are not quite canopying. And now I'm at the dilemma where do I go ahead and run the John Deere cultivator again or do I switch over and try to use that buffalo but I think the buffalo it'll do a really nice job in here where the beans are almost canopied but I think where we get over there where the beans are short I think it's probably going to bury them so I don't know I'm really glad we didn't get the heavy rains because I don't you know I don't want to try to erode the, the hilltop with all the loose soil but it's nice that we can keep them clean. Anyway, I'm just pulling a few of these obnoxious big weeds out here towards the, the point rows. Uh, anyway, so I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet. Just another lovely day. It's not drying up the mow hay yet, unfortunately. We had three... <laughs> We had three tenths of an inch of rain yesterday morning, and it was, I mean, freaking hot out, but it just, it wasn't drying much with that humidity being so freaking high. So today I'm just doing a little servicing on the skid loader, and so changing oil and fuel and filters, and and it's had a, a problem with the starting circuit for, I don't know, a little while now. I started back in... February I think is when it started or when the symptoms started acting up and that was I remember putting the video up and showing you guys it was when you turned the key it kind of acted like it had a dead battery and we ended up changing the battery cleaning the terminals and it was okay for a little while but it's, then it would crank but it wouldn't turn the fuel on and that's when it got stuck on the side of the road and the dealer came out and looked at it and they got it to run for us but anyway so 
Um, what we've done so far to be able to utilize the skid loaders, we've got a hot wire going from the starter over there around to the fuel solenoid with a fuse and a switch and everything. That way we can turn the fuel on and make it, you know, turn the fuel on and then it will start. But it's just, it's a major freaking pain in the ass. So I'm going to go ahead and get the cab flipped up now. We've got it serviced and we can start it again. Get the cab flipped up and see if maybe I can't figure out what the heck that thing is doing. It's a nice day out, so hopefully it'll dry here in another day or two. But we're supposed to get some rain again tomorrow and into the next day, so I don't know. It's supposed to be dry towards the end of the week, but then maybe they'll put rain back in the forecast in two days, and then it will be... I don't know, man. We just we can't seem to get hay going back at it. I mean, we got some of the first cutting done, but we haven't been able to get the rest of it done, so here we are. It's kind of waiting in limbo as it go. <clears throat> okay, guys, so... What we are doing is trying to find where that harness right there goes to this guy and up around there to that one. You can just barely see it there. That one is the fuel shutoff solenoid. I'm not sure what that one is other than possibly for cold weather it's probably in advance. So upon all the ohms checks coming from the relay bank and fuse area here around through the harness over there I only had 0.8 ohms which isn't really much resistance at all so I thought well, what the hell let's try swapping a few relays around maybe we've got just a weak relay this one here in the middle is for the, the uh, fuel to start as we look at the little fuse diagram here so it's the um, coupler lock same with that one both of them are coupler locks and a no fuel this one's a no start so it just won't crank. This one actually shuts the fuel off, which is our problem. We're not getting signal to our fuel. So I just went ahead and pulled out the, the relay for that guy and put it back here with the, I don't know why they put the lights back here where you can't fucking get to them. Anyway, pulled that one out, put this one in with the lights, went up and turned the lights on. Hey, the lights come on. I thought, well, shit, that relay's fine. Well, what the hell? Let's go ahead and try to start it with the the light re right relay in the in the hole for the f for the fuel. Boom! She started right up. Oh, what the frick? So I've got a new relay here. Pop that guy in, and she fucking starts right up. So somehow this relay, it's got enough connection to turn on the lights, but she's not turning on the fuel. So. All the dicking around we've done for the last, I don't know, five months is that stupid fucking relay right there that just wouldn't turn on the damn fuel. Uh, anyway, keep that in mind. Your, uh, your fuses and relays, you know, is a good area to start. I got to tighten that back up yet. But uh, we would blow everything out anyway, get all the dirt and shit off of it. It's a good, good little check for us. And I kind of know where the wiring harness goes. She's all, you know, I found which harness has got the wire going to it and followed it all the way back here through this guy. And this is the one right here that goes to the fuel. Checking it over there. Like I said, we didn't have enough resistance to cause any problems. So it kind of led me back to that guy. So let's just turn it on real quick so you can verify. Here she's clicking. Bam, starts right up. And I'll show you, we'll put this other relay in real quick. Pull that good one back out, brand new, off the shelf. Put that guy back in. Go back up here to the start. See, okay, that's all it will do. Pup, pup, pup. So, that's definitely our problem. Definitely strange that it still works for the lights. Evidently the lights don't draw enough amps or whatever. So that's that. I think we're good enough to go back together, put the cab back down and call her good for now. We just could we just got her all serviced up. We need to get the hours jotted down. And then put some more antifreeze back in because I even pulled the water temp sensor out and checked that guy, but that wasn't the problem. What a pain. So now that the skid loaders are working good, I'm kind of cleaning up the poop pile around our horse feeder. 
and I scared out a snake on this side of the poop pile. Man, that, yeah, that's kind of cool. Right over on the other side, though, was this even bigger one. This dude is like about two and a half feet long. Nice garter snake. Of course, everybody wants to come down and check him out now. Oh, hey. How you going, buddy? Come back up here. Trying to re-catch him one-handed. And all, I'm just kind of chilling out here. He's not trying to bite at all. Nice size. Just about the diameter of a quarter. Now that I'm moving around a bit, he's getting kind of agitated. Kind of cool. It's nice to see some bigger snakes around again. We'll put him right back down here in a minute after the kids come down and see him. What do you think of snakes, Cameron? You like snakes? Yep. Yep, they're pretty cool. Usually we don't have too many snakes around here, but we do have garter snakes and some grass snakes, which are green. Maybe a few bull snakes, but those are getting few and far between. Remember when I was a young lad, probably about four years old, they caught a six-foot bull snake just at the engine head of my driveway. That was pretty cool. Well, guys, I think we're going to cut it there. Just waiting. We've got everything stacked up here in the shed, waiting to get going on the hay. There's there's one of my operators. Old dog. Old dog. Poor old boy. He's getting old and starting to have some hip troubles. Anyway, you guys know the story. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe. And hope you enjoy watching us carry on here as we kind of tear things up and try to fix things and just sit around waiting on the hay to dry or dry enough to we can mow hay anyway thanks for watching guys catch you later